National Master James Canty III here with Chess.com, and today we have Game of the Day. With the white pieces, we have Dragon by Komodo, and with the black pieces, we have Zypos. Let's get right into it. Here it is. We have e4 and then e5. Knight f3 and knight f6, a Petrov defense or the Russian implemented from Fabiano Caruana being one of the greatest ones to play this, this opening here. It, quite annoying, but also quite fun for the black player. But if you don't know what you're doing, you can get in a lot of trouble. And it does throw a lot of people off. If you don't know how to face this here, we recommend that you look at the World Championship Games in 2018 from Magnus Carlsen and Fabiano. So pretty fun stuff here. But after knight f6, there's d4, which is a newer way to play. Play, we would say usually you would see knight takes e5 now of course d4 has already been played but nowadays it's played a little bit more because there's more action for white there's different positions that you usually don't get with the regular petrov after knight takes e5 and knight takes e4 and things like that so we have d4 it's also a favorite of wesley so's as well wesley so does play the d4 variation here with great success actually so uh, something that you guys should implement let's take a look at the rest of the game knight takes e4 and then bishop to d3 attacking the knight so of course we always want to keep material count even unless Unless you're gambiting a pawn for rapid development or something like that but here in this case we are just uh temporarily down a pawn we're going to get it back quite easily here like by taking on e5 so bishop to d3 it attacks the knight so we have two pieces out developed and we have d5 here from zypos and then dragon says knight takes e5 give me my pawn back thank you so much here knight to d7 here now the rule a lot of times guys is when they cross the line they have to go and what is the line the line is anything one to four and for black it will be anything five to eight here so after you cross over the halfway point into your opponent's territory it's vital that you get rid of that piece they have to go so in this case we do see the bishop can capture on e4 maybe you'll see something like knight to d2 or knight to c3 to get rid of this knight and black in great fashion is doing actually the same thing trying to deprive this knight from the e5 square because it is in black's territory after knight to d7 we have knight to c3 here which is an interesting move it's uh, actually inviting a double of the pawns here. But if, if the pawns are doubled, if we do have something like knight takes c3 in this position, well, this bishop has a very long range uh, here on the king side. Hitting the h7 pawn, especially after castling, is going to be very vulnerable for black. So pretty nice move here. And actually, let's see what happens. Actually, after bishop to b4, which is a great move here, attacking the knight two times, you would see something like maybe defend this pawn, right? Because knight takes c3, defi uh, defended by the pawn. And then after knight takes c3, you have pawn takes, bishop takes c3 and attacking the king and the rook with a double attack so you should defend it right or not just castle get out of the way and have a nice day says dragon here castle what a move here just getting right out of the way and saying you can have the pawn i dare you to take it and let's see what happens after castles there's knight takes c5 so of course we did originally want to do this anyway and also uh, expose the bishop just get the bishop out and make sure we have good range eliminating a great piece that white had a great move knight takes c5 d takes and then zypo says you know what if you're going to give me a pawn I'm going to take a pawn. So he goes for it. Knight takes c3, uh, b takes c3, bishop takes c3, and of course two pawns are attacked here, or two pieces, uh, the pawn and the rook are attacked, so double attack. After bishop takes c3, we see rook to b1, just putting the rook on the file with a smile. Very nice here. Of course, it's only like the best move anyway. You do have something like bishop to a3, which is quite strange. It will work as it cuts off the king, but it does, uh, it does just sack the exchange with maybe not the most... Um, compensation for it so after bishop takes c3 we have rook to b1 with putting a rook on this on the file here again and then castles because if bishop takes e5 where well, we run straight into a pin here this is just a nasty pin why would we do this you, you got to get your king castled right we already took one pawn let's not take another one until later so after rook to b1 we have castles and then here we go guys now he says you know what dragon says hey this position is pretty fun to play maybe it looks a little boring we haven't developed a lot of things here you know what we're just going to do this right here Bam! Bishop takes h7 is on the board. It's already there. Take away that king protection. Thanks for the pawn. Because after king takes, well, we're just going to get that material right back. Just like that. Queen d3 with a check, and we're hitting c3 as well. And then king to g8, and we take. Now in this position, being quite roughly equal, who would you rather be in this position? Take a second and answer that. Well, actually... White is probably the one pushing for more. Why? Because of the king safety here. The king safety, of course, we have an open H file that we could potentially use. And now one of the, the front doors here in front of the king are now actually taken away as white's king is just much safer right now. But we have no clear way just yet of how to attack this king. So let's see what happens. After b6 here, uh, just wanted to maybe bishop b7. And also the fact that this pawn is 
attacked by this rook. So if you want to develop your bishop finally anywhere over here, well, you're going to have to worry about the b-pawn here. So we play b6. We also um, maybe um, preparing c5. Okay, so b6 and queen to g3 out of the way here. Very nice lining up with the king. Something like bishop g5 could be devastating and deadly. So we need to start coordinating our pieces to actually uh, have a great kingside attack. So queen to g3 threatening stuff like bishop to g5. Maybe even rook b4 and rook h4. Look at that rook lift. This is scary already for the black pieces. After queen g3, there's queen to d7. Strong move here. And you're like, queen d7? Why would I jump right in front of my bishop? Well, a key thing to remember and a key thing to do is when you're being attacked, it's always good to trade the pieces that are attacking you. So queen to d7 with the intention of queen to g4, which is a very nice move. So after queen d7, we have h3 from a dragon here, stopping queen g4 from ever happening. And then queen f5 and we live. We actually have to sit here and do something. We got to get the queen closer over here because there are no pieces around the king, meaning that we're going to be in a lot of trouble with the black pieces if we cannot defend. So the queen comes over here for the defense, maybe dropping into h7 or even g6, a ugly square to go to. But we do have opposite color bishops. So if we do have a trade with queen to g6, we, we could maybe draw the game, but this it's just an uh, it's a lot of play left, but an ugly move to make is queen to g6. Bishop g5 from dragon here, threatening bishop to f6 in some cases, because again, we do have queen to g6. But again, we have to develop our pieces no matter what. You got to get your pieces off the back rank. And even if we moved it to e3, of course, this probably wouldn't be the best move. The fact of the matter is we do have to develop our pieces in every single game. So bishop to g5, he gets out of the way. And here we are with c5, not only gaining some space, but also stopping this rook from rook lifting to a very strong square, which is rook b4 for the score. And then we come over here with rook h4 or rook f4 with a very nice uh, threats against black's king. So after c5, there's rook to b3 from dragging here, threatening, hey, you know what? If I can't rook lift to b4 anymore, I'm going to go to rook to b3. Pretty nice. Rook f3 is a strong move. Follow with the same type of sequence. I mean, what a rook lift here. Again, black is the one defending. White is the only one really playing for a big win here and also looking for mistakes is what black's doing. Um, so after after rook to b3, there's queen to g6 just staying here. Hey, you know what? We want to block all of this now. I would love to get on queen g6 because if you move your bishop, then we're going to take that queen and not even think twice about it. Now, after queen to g6, there's rook to f3. Once again, we're maybe going for something like this. Maybe in some cases, even being, a being able to drop the bishop on f6 after removing the queen and replacing it with, with, with the rook. Okay, rook f3, bishop e6. Again, you have to develop. It may suck to defend, but you have to develop your pieces. Bishop e6, so now the rooks are connected, but looks like black's definitely behind here. After queen f4 here, with maybe threats like rook to g3, or even bishop f6 immediately. Super strong stuff here. And then queen to e4 says, hey, let's just get the ladies off the board here. We need to trade. Please trade. And of course, dragon's like, what do you mean trade? What is that? Queen to d2, we're not trading anything. Rook f to c8, of course, so we're making some loot for the king in a way. King f8, actually, so we can run away if we need to, just in case things get very dicey. Now, one of the things to remember when you are attacking is always make threats. I teach students this all the time, is about three threats or more in a row. The more threats you can make, the easier it is for your opponent to make a mistake. So here it is, rookie one, bam, hit that queen. We also get the file at the same time. Very nice move. Queen moves out of the way. Queen h7, and then here's another one. Rook g3, threatening stuff like bishop f6 or bishop h6. And look at this queen over here on h7 sad queen right very sad queen but you know what we did move this f rook so we can move our king out of the way and have a nice day we are running for the hills getting away from civilization here king f8 i'm out of the way and here we go if you're playing white in this position there's many moves that you can make but there's a very strong move very fun move to make what would you play in this position if you were dragon Here it is, guys. Very strong move. I hope you're ready for it. Bishop F6, it's on the board. Oh, my goodness. This man is ready to work, or this machine is going crazy here. Bishop F6, I'm just going straight for it. Just going for it. Let's do it. Whatever. And, of course, if G6 is just annoying, this bishop is sitting on F6, just all in Black's house. Not fun. So he says, you know what? Hey, we're just going to take it. We got to get rid of this bishop. You can't stay along. Uh, you can't stay here for long. So after capturing on f6, we capture back. And then there's queen h4, which is a very strong move. Just kind of, you know, taking uh, taking a stock and taking good advantage of the dark squares. Because queen h6 is going to be devastating. Queen f4 could be scary due to queen d6. There's a lot of things that can happen after queen h4, right? Also threatening f6. So we think we're doing fine here. Black's like, I can defend. You know, your pieces are further back on a third third rank like that's the best piece you have is on the third rank i should be okay or am i what would you do in this position white to move 
Here it is, guys. Here it is. Dragon played. Rook takes e6 is on the board. Oh my goodness, look at that again. Rook takes e6, sacrificing. Rook takes e6, doesn't care about anything. Rook takes e6, pretty nice. So, uh, very strong move here. Rook takes e6, sacrificing just the whole rook and says, take it if you like. So he says, well, I don't have anything else better to do. I need to take this rook. And after rook takes, we have rook to g4. So rook to g4 is now being able, uh, giving us the square of f4. So we can drop, drop into d6. Queen h5, and then he plays rook to g5 here, which you also had queen f4 as an option. Rook to g5 is what was chosen from dragon. Queen h8 going back here to attack the f6 square. And then queen f4, there it is. We're trying to get that queen in the d6 here. And here it goes. Rook to c6. Pretty cool move. You know, we have to defend. And we have to get this rook over here as well. But watch the watch how the maneuver of the pieces really favor right here. Especially with this very weak king even being down a full rook right now. Rook to c6 and rook to g6 here. So we can put our queen on g5, maybe g4. And also rook to h6 is a move as well. Okay. Black plays e5, and then white responds with queen to g5 here. Very strong move. Rook h6, rook g7, and maybe even f7. Things like this as well. Queen g5 and rook to e8. So we have now, finally, we have enough pieces around the king. Or is it? Is there enough here? We don't really know yet. We're going to see what happens. Rook e8, rook to h6, threatening the queen, and then queen to g8. And after queen g8, a very strong move here. Can you find it, guys? Can you find a move here? I'm down a full rook. Qu trading queens is not a move. That is not a move. You cannot trade queens, okay? Queen takes G G8. We'll lose. So you need to keep the queens on. So where are you moving here, queen? Here it is. Here it is. Queen H5 and we live. So rook H8 to be very great here and actually pin the queen down to the king. And then we're going to win some material in that case. Um, even f7 in some in some cases it's a, a very strong stuff queen h5 rook e to e6 here and here we go you know the queen is going to be lost now this is something to pay attention to here guys as this is the live position from the game now these two rooks two rooks are usually uh, more times than not better than the queen and if you are a beginner and you're watching this video and you didn't know that here just because you're losing your queen doesn't mean the game's over as long as you have this compensation which could be these two rooks here usually just being better than the queen because two is better than one and also if you add it up think about the point value here it would be 10 points for the rook and the not the queen being nine so what the job would be was you need to keep these rooks con excuse me connected you need to keep them connected and you want to keep them either doubled or like connected like this. Now, the queen here is the thing that is going to be very annoying because the shelter for the king is non-existing. So what we're going to do is be doing a lots of checks, try to gobble these pawns. And you need a plan. You need just more than a queen. You cannot do this with just the queen. You can't. It's not going to happen. So what you have to do, actually, is have other pieces, maybe use the pawns and try the queen knees, because these are past pawns. And also, in the same case of also gobbling up as many pawns as we possibly can. But these rooks are passive. So white actually here, even though this position's a little equal, actually, uh, white actually has a lot to press for here, as black is very passive. Maybe if we could double the rooks this way, but then even in that case, we could play maybe f3 and just kind of chill. Now, after king takes g8, there's queen e8 check, and then king g7 and then we're going to fast forward just a little bit because there's a lot of moves left so g4 as we said our plan was to make sure we use our queen and the extra material we do have to definitely try to win this game here as the rooks are still passive now they're not passive enough i mean they are on the sixth rank and doubled so getting past this without protection of the other pawn here is going to be very difficult for white so after g4 there is rook f to e6 of course threaten the queen self-explanatory and then there's a check king f6 Check again, rookie seven and h4 as we're just marching, walking the dogs in the park all the way through, just having a nice day as we stroll these pawns down the board trying to get another queen. h4, and then there's d4 and h5, and we live. It's just going to keep rolling the pawns. Remember the plan? Stick to the plan. Execute the plan. h5, king e6, h6, and then rook c to c7. So now the rooks are doubled more passively on the seventh rank here. And then queen to g8 check. And this is pretty simple here, guys. Now, we, we actually played king to g2 from dragon, but I did want to show this quick line here because this was another way to do it too, uh, which was playing g5, which is pretty awesome. Just pushing forward. And then after king f4, you have g6 again, rook e6, and then you just take it. And look at the beautiful pawns just rolling down here. I'm going to queen this way, or I'm going to queen this way. It doesn't really matter. Rook g7. 
H8 queen, rook takes g6, and I mean, this this one's over as well. So, you know, that's a very fun way to do this. There's many ways to play, but actually dragon shows. The king to g2 one, actually, just trying to get every piece into play here. Because, of course, you again, you can't just do it with your queen. But the queen and the pawns, with the help of the king here, is going to be awesome. So, rook f7, king to f3, king uh, e7 check, and king e4. We're going to fast forward some moves here. h7, rook c to c8, and queen g7 check. King to d6, and here we go. Queen h6 check, king c7, g5, and we live. Just keep pushing them. Keep pushing them. Stick to the plan, right? Pretty easy plan. Rook f4, king takes e5, threatening the rook here. Rook f to f8. Then we play queen d6 check. King has to go to b7. And g6, and look at the pawns just strolling through the park. d3, last ditch try here. Of course, try whatever you can. You know, this is not bullet chess. And this this won't work and this won't work here. But he's doing it anyway. C takes D4, C takes D3, Rook H8, Queen to D7 check, uh, Queen to D5, or uh, Rook C7, then Queen D5, Rook to C6, and Queen G8. Strong move. It's absolutely strong here. This is gonna be over very soon. Rook to uh C8, and here it is. Just take the rook. Just take it. We're going to get a queen anyway. And then after g7, rook e8, when we, as we fast forward, this game is completely over here. So we're going to take, and then the rest is history, guys. Let's see how it finished. Queen check, pretty simple. We make a queen, and we just go for mate. And here it is. Queen c3 check, king a4, queen b3 check. And can you find the mate, guys? There's two of them on the board. Okay, can you find them? Which mate would you choose? But here's the, here's the mate here. Queen b5, of course, is mate, guys. And queen a3 is the mate from the game. What a game here. Nice double sack in a way of course bishop f6 and rook takes e6 that was very strong stuff i hope you guys enjoyed today's game of the day i'm national master james canty the third here with chess.com and i'll see you guys on the next video